Konnichiwa, I'm David G. People often associate a trip to Japan during cherry blossom season with sky high prices. But that simply does not have to be the case. I recently visited myself, and in this video, I'll be sharing how I got great deals, why right now is a great time to save, and all the important details to get you the most value for your money. Shall we dig in? A great place to start your planning is the official cherry blossom bloom forecast put out by the Japan Meteorological Corporation. They have a cherry blossom forecast map that shows the expected blooming dates for different parts of the country. After each year's forecast is released, they go back and update it from time to time, so it's a good idea to periodically check it as your trip gets closer. To get started, and this is generally true when it comes to travel, you want to book your flights and accommodation well in advance, especially if you're traveling during peak bloom season. There are around 200 different kinds of cherry blossom trees in Japan, each with their own characteristics. The blooming predictions are generally for the Some Yoshino variety that was made popular way back in the Edo period though. Although cherry blossom season is by far the most well-known time to visit, Japan celebrates the blooming of other plants as well. Towards the end of the cherry blossom full bloom, beautiful wisteria plants begin to bloom all over the country. Initially, you want to plan most of your trip months ahead, but after initial planning, it's important to go back and check for better deals closer to your trip. Some of the Japanese hotels don't even put up availability until a few months before the date of stay. And there's always a chance of someone canceling last minute and causing a place that you originally wanted to stay at to open up. It's not uncommon to have cloudy and rainy weather throughout Japan during cherry blossom season. So planning a long enough trip to have a high chance of some days with good weather is a good idea. I'd recommend a minimum two weeks. It's also important to make sure you pack for all types of weather. Sometimes, the blooming forecast can be off, but if you arrive a little too early or too late, not all hope is lost. Blooming dates usually differ by up to weeks at a time in areas near popular cities like Osaka and Tokyo. We'll get more into Japan's great transport later in this video, but even if you arrived a little bit too late or too early, you could easily plan a last-minute day trip to a nearby area where the blossoms are currently in full bloom. Even if you're able to align your trip perfectly with the full bloom, it can be worthwhile to plan a few day trips to places to view cherry blossom trees somewhere outside of main tourist destinations. One great day trip near Kyoto for this is a trip to Lake Biwa, Japan's largest lake. Along the lake, there are a lot of nice cherry blossom trees, and the lake and mountains provide additional beautiful scenery. Also, it's useful to remember that the forecasted blooming dates are usually based on only the Some Yoshino variety of tree. Many other varieties will bloom later or earlier, so you'll still most likely be able to catch some sakuras in bloom. During my recent trip, I arrived just about at the perfect time to witness the full bloom of the Some Yoshinos in Osaka. But when I visited Kyoto just a few days later, their Some Yoshinos had already dropped a lot of their blossoms. I was still able to see many other varieties of cherry blossom trees in bloom, including beautiful weeping cherry blossom trees and pink kanzan trees scattered throughout the city. An added bonus to planning that bucket list trip to see Japan in cherry blossom season is that, right now, the dollar goes much further than it has in the recent past. See, if you visited in, say, 2021, one dollar would have been worth only 104 yen. But, visiting in 2023, your dollar will be worth between 130 and 150 yen. The thing is, not everything's gone up in price with the inflation rate in Japan, so for the most part, things are a bit cheaper than they were in 2021 if you're coming with the dollar. And now that we're talking about value, let's get into how you can find great places to stay on a budget during cherry blossom season in Japan. There's no way around it. 
A lot of places just raise their rates significantly, and occupancy is generally higher. But that does not mean there aren't still deals. To get your search started, it's worth looking at different Rio cons, hotels, and even capsule hotels and hostels, as planning ahead gives you more of a chance to find good prices. That said, my secret weapon for my trip to Japan during cherry blossom season is business hotels. These are comfortable and affordable places to stay at that often have low rates even during peak tourist times like cherry blossom season. So far, this strategy has always worked for me, and there are a ton of Japanese business hotel brands to choose from. During my trip for cherry blossom season, I stayed first at a super hotel in Osaka, and then at an APA hotel near Kyoto. But there are many more to choose from, and the best choice will likely depend on which locations in Japan you're looking at visiting. If I was traveling solo though, I'd make sure to take a good look at capsule hotels and hostels, as these could still be cheaper than business hotels. Doing a quick search for Tokyo around the possible 2024 cherry blossom blooming dates, you can see that there are lots of different hotels with good ratings for under 100 a night. And that's considering that Tokyo is about as pricey as it gets for Japanese cities, cherry blossom season or not. Another important consideration when booking your accommodations, well and really anything else, is to look for options with flexibility. With hotels, this is usually pretty straightforward though you may have to pay a slightly higher rate for an option with free cancellation. Then for flights, most airlines are also offering a higher degree of flexibility after the pandemic. And on the topic of transportation, let's take a look at how to go about planning that part of your trip to Japan for cherry blossom season. You're most likely to enter and exit Japan at either Tokyo Haneda or Tokyo Narita, though Osaka has a fair share of international flights too. For finding good deals to get to Japan, Google Flights is a good go-to tool to look into fares. Another great option could be booking with points and miles if you can find availability. Looking at cash fares though, the forecast for 2023 predicted Tokyo's full bloom to occur on March 24th. So let's use that as a starting point. I'm taking a look at non-stop flights from LA, but you could really do this for any departure city. If you go and take a look in Calendar View and Google Flights, you can see that airlines have already loaded higher fares for these busier dates. But there's still some lower fares to be had. Let's look into them. The four that Google deems to be the best options are booked with Zip Air, United, American, and Delta. I take the flights booked with American, Delta, or United over Zip Air. Though they're a tad bit pricier, all three of them are selling tickets that offer flexibility. For a bit more than the lowest fare, you can book a regular economy ticket that includes fee-free changes. Then all you'd have to do is just pay the difference in fare if you need to change your flights. These three airlines also include basic amenities in economy class and more baggage for your long-haul flight. Zip Air, on the other hand, makes you pay separately for these things. That's not to mention that if your plans had to drastically change, you'd just be stuck with unusable tickets on Zip Air. Now there's really a whole lot more that you could do to save money on flights to Japan. But if you don't have tons of time, this method is a great way for just about anyone to get low fares to Japan. Once you're in Japan, it's easy and generally affordable to get just about anywhere. Train travel is a great way to get around Japan, but it's worth considering other options sometimes too. In Japan, the use of IC cards such as Suica or Paso has grown in popularity. However, Outside of tiny discounts on some public transport systems and a few activities, they don't provide any kind of discount. Moreover, Japan has recently been experiencing a chip shortage, and because of this they've been unable to manufacture and sell cards for weeks on end. For this reason, and the potential hassle of getting one, I just stick to paying with cash and card. If they do decide to offer more discounts in the future and become easier to get again, then they could be worth looking into. The Japan Rail Pass has long been known as a great value way to get unlimited train travel for said periods of time. But as of October 2023, prices for the pass have increased massively, and it's definitely not as good of a deal as it used to be. You still might be able to get value from it if your itinerary includes a ton of high-speed train travel. There are also many localized passes that can save you a lot of money on public transport. These depend heavily on which part of Japan you'll be visiting. 
Sometimes it can still be cheaper to buy individual tickets though. A lot of people I know, sometimes including myself, love to just hop in a taxi when they get out of the airport. In Japan, that is not a good way to go about things. Taxis are notoriously expensive in Japan and nearly always much, much more than any public transport option. My recommendation is to download Google Maps and figure out the best public transport routes. So I hope it's clear. Transportation and accommodation in Japan don't have to break the bank. But what about the cost of eating good food in Japan? If you have breakfast included where you're staying, you could easily spend around $20 a day on food and beverages. A typical day of eating for around $20 could be breakfast at the hotel, some ramen or tsukemen, an afternoon snack, perhaps a coffee or tea, and maybe a set meal for dinner. There are extensive budget options nearly everywhere in Japan. A good starting point is getting to know what the affordable chains are, because in Japan there's a ton of them and the standards are seriously high. Some of my favorites that are pretty widespread are Yoshinoya for beef bowls, Sushiro for rolling sushi, and Ichiran for tonkotsu ramen. Don't forget about local restaurants though. You'll often find they have even better food and service than most chains, and the prices can be lower sometimes. There's also the much talked about convenience store game, but grocery stores can be even cheaper. I often go right around 7 p.m. when all the fresh sushi gets discounted. So now that we've looked through how to visit Japan on a budget during cherry blossom season, are you ready to plan your trip? If you are, we'd love to hear about it in the comments. And if you have any thoughts that weren't covered in this video, I'd love to read about them. If you found this video helpful, then let me know with a thumbs up and consider subscribing to my channel for more videos to help you travel better.